Hey everybody, Dave here. Today I am going to automate rpachallenge.com in UiPath Studio X. Now you might ask, what is Studio X. It's just UiPath, but you can open UiPath in multiple profiles. For licensing concerns, don't come to me. I'm not a UiPath expert. Ask somebody who knows what they're talking about and they can explain that to you. As far as the features of UiPath Studio X versus UiPath Studio, you can do a lot more with Studio. There's more flexibility. It's more developer focused, especially a lot of the terminology. And then Studio X is more for a business user or a non-developer. And that doesn't mean that a business user or a non-developer can't use UiPath Studio, but if it's your first time getting into automation and stuff, UiPath Studio is probably gonna take a fair amount of time to get used to. But Studio X, you can probably spend a day or two playing around with it and immediately start making automations that really benefit you on the job. I would not say that if I didn't think it. I don't benefit from saying these things. I don't make money or, or benefit in any way by promoting this product. So genuinely, I think it's pretty good. So let me show you how easy it is to automate rpachallenge.com with UiPath Studio X. If you haven't seen rpachallenge.com before, I'll mention a couple things. What I'm gonna do is build the automation to click the start button, and then I'm going to have it pull rows out of an Excel spreadsheet that I've downloaded by clicking this download button, and I fixed a few pieces of data in it. There's a column problem, and there's also some extra rows and stuff. If that was part of the challenge, I'm sorry, but I manually fixed that stuff. So that input file is sitting on my hard drive. I'm gonna get the rows from that Excel spreadsheet and write each of the pieces of data into these fields, and then it's gonna click submit after each row, right? And when it gets to the end of submitting, it's gonna tell us what score we got by telling us how many fields we entered correctly. And that's basically it. Let's see how long it takes me in Studio X. So I'm gonna reset this. Let's start by clicking blank task in Studio X. I'm gonna name this rpachallenge.com and I'm going to click create. Now the way that this works is I need to look in the activities pane on the left and I'm gonna take some web activities and some Excel activities and drop them over here and then I'm gonna configure them, click on this web page a few times, and we'll be done. So let's start by grabbing something from the app and web section. I know that I want to use an application or browser, so I'm gonna drag this over here, and then I'm gonna click this link that says Indicate Application to Automate, and then I'll click on this website, and it already grabbed rpachallenge.com for me, and then what I wanna do next is bring over Excel. So I want to use Excel, use Excel file, drag it and drop it over here. So to choose the Excel file that I want to use, I can actually click this browse for file button and then I can type to go to where I know this is saved, challenge. And then I don't want to save changes to this because I'm just getting data out of it. I do not want to create it if it doesn't exist already. I want it to throw an exception probably. Now that I've got sort of use Chrome and then inside that use Excel, what I'm hoping I can do is loop through each of these Excel files and use Chrome while I use Excel. So I'm going to click the activities again. And what I want to do is there should be like a loop activity of some kind for each Excel row, right? So I'm going to click for each Excel row drag it over here. So what I want to do is, is get each row from a certain range. So let me click here, Excel sheet one, and it does have headers. I do not want to save after each row. The next thing I want to do is, oh, you know what we forgot is before we start entering the data over here, we've got to hit start. So let me click on this plus button and I want to click indicate target on screen, this button right here. Uh, it says no anchor automatically found and it's asking me to locate an anchor. So I guess I'll choose the download button, confirm. And then after it clicks start, I might want it to wait for just a second. This is what I did in the other versions of the same automation and the other RPA tools. So I think I'm just gonna do that here just in case. I don't actually know what it's called. Wait for download, that's probably not it. So let's type delay, delay, delay is it. Okay, we want to change this. How do I, how do I change this? Oh, I, okay, I just click on it. And let's change this to uh, two seconds. So it should click, wait for two seconds, and then we start looping through each Excel row. 
So we're looping through each row in sheet one. It has headers. And then what I want to do is take the data from that row and write it over here. So let's hit type into. Oh, there it is. And I want to type into first name first. It's going to ask me to confirm that this is the anchor for the first name field. And that is the, the anchor because that's the label, right? That's the point of this website. Each time, I probably didn't mention this earlier. When you hit submit, the fields change location on the page. And uh, you're welcome for my introducing that several minutes into the video. <laughs> that's kind of the whole point is can your RPA tool or can you as a developer handle developing an automation that will adjust to fields changing location on a page because that's kind of one of the things that breaks RPA. So I'm going to click confirm. And so this is going to type into the first name, but I need to type something. So let me select a value from the current row. Wow, that's pretty sick. Okay, so that's right. Yeah, so you it actually looks in the Excel spreadsheet and gets the data that's in there currently. I didn't build any of this out initially. This is just in the Excel spreadsheet. And it says, oh, I, we found a field called first name. So I guess I'll choose that one. And then I do want to empty the field before typing. That makes sense. And click before typing, sure. Right, so we need to type into it after clicking and doing kind of a send keys, just like I did in the streamlined version of the Blue Prism uh, automation of the same website. So the next thing I wanna do is type into the last name field. So let me actually, can I copy this? That would be so nice. Let's paste. Okay, so it says type into first name. Let's see if it renames the stage after I click to sort of re-indicate the target on screen. So let's click last name and it's gonna auto find the label. I wanna confirm. Okay, let's, okay, so it renamed it, type into last name, that's pretty cool. And then it says it's gonna type the first name. So I wanna change that. Can I, can I change that? Yes, I can. So let's type the last name and this stuff doesn't need to change. So let's just keep copy pasting this indicate target on screen. I think I want to do, I usually do for phone number next. Confirm that's the label. I want to change this to write the phone number. Let's copy and paste this. Indicate on screen. Okay, so phone number, we want to do email next. I guess it doesn't really matter what order we do this, but current row, email, Indicate on screen. This is a little too easy. All right, let's go to address. Confirm. Let's indicate target on screen. We're going to go to the next field, which is probably company name. And then let's, oh, wait, well, I almost forgot. We got to change this to use a different field. Company name. Let's copy, paste that. Let's indicate target on screen again. Roll in company. Confirm. Okay. Did we do everything? Right, right. I'm the worst. We got to change this to use the other field. Roll in company. So I'm just going to glance over these, make sure they look good. Type into roll in company. And then it's company name at, oh, there, there's one I messed up on. So this one's got to be address. Okay. Email, phone number last name, first name. We can't almost be done, can we? <laughs> Surely not. Uh, okay, so after we do all of this for each time, we've got to click submit. So I'm going to hit here, click, indicate target on screen. So what do I anchor this to? Do we, do we anchor it to the start button? Let's just, uh, let's just hit confirm and see if it can work without an anchor. And it's not giving us an error, so I guess that means maybe we're good. We'll find out when we test this. All right, so it's going to type all that stuff for each row and click submit. I think maybe we want a, a small weight at the end of this. Can I put like a weight inside of this? Please, somebody who's watching this and you know UiPath Studio X well, can you put an implicit weight inside of this stage? Like, can I tell it after this is done clicking, can you, you wait for, you know, a second? But instead, what I'm going to do is click here and I'm just going to go ahead and put a delay at the end of this. There's probably a better way to do this, but I, I don't know what it is. 
Um, so I'm going to do like a one second wait and save. And what I'm hoping that will do is we won't accidentally uh, quickly try to retype into the same field that we've already typed into. And we'll give the page time to start navigating away and refreshing the page. Basically, that can't be it. That was too easy. I guess we just run this thing. So one thing I'm leaving off is is closing the browser. I also don't have a launch browser, so I assume this is going to open it for me. Uh, when I was testing this, I actually can't remember what it does, so we'll find out. I'm going to just close the web page and see if it opens uh, opens that for me. Here we go. You ready for this? Oh, it opened it over there. What is going on? So here's what I've done. I've reopened the web page. I am going to close it now and see if when we run this test this time, if it's going to open it right here on the screen. I am recording only a small part of this screen. So let's hope that it shows up in the right place. Hey, look at that. Okay, here we go. So you may not be able to see it, but what I can see behind this window is that Excel has opened on the screen and it's showing me the data that it's working with right now. It looks to be doing everything correctly because the I know the second row is Jane and we are on round two. So this is looking pretty good and it's clicking submit. It's waiting a second and then it's entering the next row. It will be interesting to see what it does when a field is slightly off the page. I didn't really think to test that. It looks like it, it looks like it scrolled. Okay, so that's, yeah, it works like, it works just fine. Clearly they knew that was a possibility. So we have some time here to talk while this thing is entering the data for me. Let me, let me just say, okay, um, clearly this was designed to work for this kind of a website. Now I'm not saying that UiPath built this for rpachallenge.com, but they clearly knew it was going to be tested on this kind of thing. Uh, it, it, who knows? It, maybe it was just a coincidence, but it just seems like it works too well for this. Now, it's still a great tool though. I'm totally fine with it being built to work for this kind of website. Of all of the apps that I have automated, all the web apps that I've automated, I've never come across one where the fields change location on the page. I mean, yeah, if you resize you know, they're, they're responsive apps and the, the locations of the fields might change in that case. Right. But it's, I at least have not come across web pages that work like this. Now I have to say, regardless of that though, it is really nice to be able to just tell it, I want to click and here's where I want to put data. Now, now that I've told you that I want to tell you where to get the data from. And then I can literally just go click on it. So in addition to using the method that I did, where you go in and, and just tell it like, here's the field I want it to pull from, from in Excel. I've seen somebody actually do it where you can literally click this cell in Excel where you want it to get the data from. And then it will make this logical assumption that you want to kind of like loop through that field and get data from it each time you, you loop. Let's look at our results. It looks like we got a success rate of 100%. What do I think? of UiPath Studio X. It's pretty good. Let me point out though, don't look at this and think, oh, I mean, this is just so much better than everything else. Why would I even use UiPath Studio? I think you'd find that if you used Studio X, you would eventually, maybe it'd take you some time, but you would start to want more capability and you start to wonder, why isn't it easier for me to do advanced techniques? I'll tell you the same reason exists in both Studio X and Blue Prism. And that is a bunch of functionality in the .NET framework is abstracted and kept away from you in these two tools so that it feels more comfortable and it's easier, quicker to pick up and learn. UiPath Studio and really Blue Prism as well, when you get down into the nitty gritty and there's some advanced techniques you can use in it that aren't immediately apparent, in UiPath Studio, you can just do a ton of things. For example, you can use any kind of .NET data type, uh, custom data types, custom objects. So in the middle of a VB.NET expression, you can be typing a bunch of string manipulation and, and data type conversions and just all kinds of stuff 
that if you go through the UiPath Studio like developer training, if you'll see a lot of that stuff, it is ridiculous for a non-developer to even have to consider doing that, which is why Studio X exists. So let me give you a suggestion. If you saw me do this and thought, man, that's great, please don't accidentally go try out UiPath Studio first, unless you're a developer. If you're already familiar with coding, go for UiPath Studio. If you're not a developer, go get UiPath, make sure that you load up the profile for UiPath Studio X and use that for a little while until you really get comfortable with it before you jump into the waters of UiPath Studio. So this has been automating rphallenge.com in UiPath Studio X. I hope that this has been exciting and entertaining, but also informational. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.